Good evening, Patriots. Hope you're all having a great weekend. I'm sure you're doing a lot of studying. As you all know, our school courtyard could use a little bit of work, and our biology class has taken on the task of planting a garden in this area. By doing this, we'll hopefully accomplish a few things. Our primary purpose here is to make our school a little more beautiful, as well as to boost student morale. In the process of doing this, we'll obviously be learning and applying quite a bit of science as we decide what types of species to plants to put in this area. Let's take a look at this from a biological perspective. Hi, thanks for joining me in the field. As you may know from your previous scientific endeavors, bio biological systems include selection pressures which drive for the development of specific traits and qualities which make certain organisms a little bit better suited to certain habitats than others. Today we'll be taking a closer look at effective diffusion across cell membranes and how that's impacted growth on our cuboidal cell culture, which has been grown for the past 48 hours. Here we can clearly observe that smaller cuboidal cells have performed or reproduced much more quickly than the larger cuboidal cells. And we want to know why is that? So one of the things that we're going to look at is why large cuboidal cells are not observed as frequently as large, smaller cells. And so enlarged are the various sizes of cuboidal cells that we see, and we're going to be taking the measurements of their lengths. Using our technologically advanced ruler, we can take the measurements that we need. As it turns out, the side length for specimen 1, it turns out to be exactly 1 centimeter. Next we find that specimen 2 measures exactly 2 centimeters in side length. And for the specimens 3, 4, and 5, we also observe side lengths of exactly 3, 4, and 5 centimeters respectively. Now that we've collected our data, it's time to analyze it in a meaningful way. In class, we've talked about this notion of surface area and volume relationships, and how a larger surface area is preferred for diffusion. To determine surface area and volume, thankfully we can use the formulas for a cube since we're working with cuboidal cells. To refresh from geometry class, surface area can be calculated from the formula 6x squared where x is the side length of a cube, or in this case our cuboidal cells. So for specimen 1, we calculate that, yes, that's right, it's 6 centimeters squared. And for the volume of a cube, we can simply use x cubed, where x again is equal to the side length. This means that we observed one centimeter cube for uh, the specimen one. We can repeat this process for the following specimens. So for specimen two, we get a surface area of, that's right, 24 centimeters squared. And for the volume, where we use x cubed, we get 8 centimeters cubed. Now that we've walked through the first two sets of calculations, we'll also start to consider surface area and volume ratio to see any observable trends. So for example, with specimen 1, we see a 6 to 1 ratio, while for specimen 2, we see a 24 to 8 ratio, which simplifies down to 3 to 1. I'd like for everyone to fill out the rest of the table at home, and any trends that you discover are ones that are going to be applicable to many organisms, so come prepared to discuss your findings and relate them to tomorrow's activity. Hi class. We covered all the material necessary for us to decide what plants we should use for our courtyard. We have three options. We have the glacier crowfoot, we have the arctic willow, and we have the prickly pear cactus. Considering what we know about our ge geographical location and the relationship between surface area and volume and other research that you will collect, help us decide what plant we should use for our courtyard here at North Pole High School. See you Monday!